Hello YouTube, Shin Tiger Curl here, that dude with the straw hat bringing you yet another awesome video. And welcome to the first in what I hope is a new is what I hope is a continuing series that I like to call Manga You Should Be Reading. A little backstory before we get into the video proper. Uh, I love reading manga. I read a tremendous amount of manga, so much so that I keep track of what ones I read and what ones I don't. And I'm all, and when just when I think I can't find a new one to read, I always stumble upon like a little hidden gem, and I end up reading it anyway. But anyway, so I decided to create a new series where I would expand, where I would show you guys, my loyal fans, or whoever just passing by these little gems and nuggets that might have gone otherwise unnoticed by the majority of otaku, my anime and manga otaku. These are little gems that I like that I constantly sometimes read and reread more than five different times. And this one is a little bit close to my heart. It doesn't have that many chapters, but it's worth reading and it's already got a big following. But why should you watch or read this? Well, I'm about to tell you that. But first, a little back, a little something before, uh, to lead up to why I'm doing this particular video. I'm a big, I'm a hopeless romantic. I love good romantics, movies and TV shows and what have you, but with developed romances and what have you. Have you. Unfortunately, manga is 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 no stranger to both good and bad romance mangas. Yeah. A lot of these, a lot of the romances in um, manga, unfortunately, is no more well developed than the than the issues of Twilight or Fifty Shades of Grey. There was one in particular I remember about this young girl who is the manager of a high school basketball team, who for some reason falls in love with the new guy on the team who happens to be a good-looking asshole. I'm serious. I couldn't even finish that fucking manga because it was just that the, the male lead was just so damn selfish and unlikable. That's when I stumbled upon this little story. Actually, the, re the real reason I stumbled upon it because I was reading a a, um, a a slice of life fighting manga named Clover, and they did a crossover with this particular one. And the characters interested me so much that I decided to check out the story proper, leading us to this. This is Ore Monogatari, Monotogari. Or, I'm sorry, I'm trying to say this. If I mess things up, if I mess up names, please forgive me. It's Ore Monogatari. I think I got that. Translated, it means my love story. It's a Japanese romantic comedy series written and illustrated by Kazuna Kawahara. Well, anyway, it was written by Kazuna Kawahara and illustrated by Aruko. It is currently being serialized in Shueshi's Baisasu Margaret magazine and is published in English by Viz Media. There is a television anime adaptation of it by Madhouse that began airing of April of, in April of this year, as well as a live-action film of the same name released in on Halloween of this year. That I didn't know. All right, let's get to the story proper. The story follows Takeo Goda. He is well, not your typical first-year high school student. For one thing, he is built like a fucking mountain. He is tall, muscular, and has an intimidating look about him. But despite all this, Takeo is actually very good-natured, kind, helpful, and pure-hearted to a fault. He would, he, he, even though his looks suggest that he looks like some kind of demon or yakuza, he's actually just a big teddy bear. But and his classmates particularly like him because he's helpful and dependable. Unfortunately, he doesn't have that good, much good luck with women. Ever since he was a little kid, all the girls that he would have an interest in either would only like him because of his best friend. Enter his enter Makoto Shinakawa or Suna to or Suna as um, Takeo calls him. He's charming, good looking, and very very intelligent. He and Takeo have been best friends for, well, since since elementary school, when have you, and have ne are always together. Takeo always is envious of his friend's good luck with the women, which is deeply contrasted by his overwhelming personality. 
He doesn't particularly, even all the girls who fall in love with him, he has no interest in them. In fact, he has never had a girlfriend because he just doesn't, he just doesn't care for those women. All this changes on a train ride to school when Takeo saves a young girl, Rinko Yamamoto, Yamoto, or Yamato, from being a, from being molested by a groper on the train. Uh, she immediately decides to show her gratitude to both Suna and Takeo by making them lunch. Even though Takeo likes her, he assumes that like all the pretty girls that he is had an interest in, she would eventually fall in love with his best friend Suna and tries to hook the two of them up together. The twist in this whole thing is that this petite, shy, innocent, doe-eyed girl falls completely and head over heels in love with Takeo, thus beginning perhaps one of the most unique love stories in this genre. Now, like I said, this was a, this is a very, very good manga as far as um as far as romances go, because it turns the entire concept of the of this typical of this of the stories in this genre on its head. Typically the innocent, shy girl often falls for the aloof, good-looking, charming guy. But the aloof, charming guy doesn't want anything to do with her. But he's not cruel about it. He just doesn't have any interest in women right now. But instead, she falls in love with the big, brutish, brutish-looking, but entirely good-natured doofus. And it just creates a, such an interesting love story between them. And for one... I happen to like uh, Yamato and Gota together. These two are epitomized cute. Even after it, it takes them about three chapters. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling things for them to finally realize their feelings for each other because Takeo's constantly trying to push um, Yamato to Suna because he assumes wrongly that she's in love with him. You'll understand more once you read. But once they reveal their feelings for each other and become a couple, it becomes a cute fest. To, uh, uh, Yamato is, is completely head over heels in love with Takeo, and the feeling is very mutual. Despite their differences, he tie, even though the, she's a small girl in comparison to pretty much everyone else, and she easy, even looks even smaller when compared to her boyfriend, they just exude a love chemistry that I rarely if ever see in, in in this type of manga. It's just so well done. And to, and Takeo was just a monster in physical strength. There there were some pretty damn good action scenes in this one for a romance comedy. So it, it's just pretty awesome. Uh so and watching the two of them interact is is a breath of fresh air in that it's he's not trying to they're not trying they're not trying to force a physical relationship between the two of them. I don't even want to think about a physical relationship between the two of them because, well, Gota's this massive Andre the Giant looking motherfucker and 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 Yamato looks like she could be an extra from the Lord of the Rings as a hobbit. She is really tiny. But it, it enjoyable, it's enjoyable to watch these two fumble in the first strings of love. I mean, you know these two are going to stay together, but watching them get through their first date and texting each other and holding hands i mean it took a, it took several chapters for yamato to work up the courage to want to hold his hand because she she doesn't want to think she doesn't want to give out the impression that she just likes him for his phys for his um um how do i put this for his physical looks his physical nature and trust me the guy is jacked seriously he looks like he was carved out of granite i'm serious but and also Suna is also another one. I thought I would hate Suna, but I actually like him. The reason for him not actually liking any of the girls who like his who like Takeo only to to get closer to him, he says in his own words that why would he want to date a girl who could talk shit about his best friend? He seems remorse and kind of ambivalent, but only with Takeo does he actually laugh and. It's only through Suna's actions that the two of them actually, that the two um, star-crossed lovers actually hook up. 
and but and you could see that he and Takeo have been best friends for a long time since he's probably the, the only only hang out with each other, and that also includes Yamato because of they they their expanded relationship with each other. He likes Yamato in the fact that she genuinely likes Takeo and doesn't try to use him or talk shit about him behind his back. She genuinely admires and loves the thug, and Yamato just says that he's happy watching the two people in the world he cares most about being happy. So yeah, this is a this this turns the entire um uh romantic comedy genre on its head and it's very very well done. So far there've been only 10 volumes of it with only about I'd say between 15 and 20 chapters that I've ever read because well they and the um the translators are very slow uh with this particular one so a lot of them don't. You know, a lot of uh, mangas don't get released. Oh, this is this one doesn't have a regular release schedule. Probably like once a month. So it's kind of it's kind of on the slow side. So if you can, if you're patient with it, I would recommend reading this. Like I said, it's it's it, like a lot of the manga that I read don't have regular weekly schedules like One Piece or Bleach or Fairy Tale, and only get um re- only that only get releases every month or so depending on the uh, publication and the, the the schedule of the writer. But yeah. And of course, this also has led up to getting itself getting an anime. Now, the problem with this is it's the same problem I have with a lot of anime, a lot of manga that get anime adaptations, specifically ones that have such a short lifespan because it's easy for the anime to overtake the manga and because of that, it has to create new story elements and new story arcs and um, how do I put this, new endings that kind of are a far and away distant far cry from what the manga entails. Probably one of the more telling examples was Soul Eater. Soul Eater is one of my personal favorite mangas. I love the, the, the whole last arc of it, but unfortunately the anime overtook it before it actually had a chance to finish and it had to create a very bullshit ending. I'm afraid this might happen with my love story, but I hope not. But certainly, if it is worth the read. One particularly funny scene that had me laughing for days was when Takeo worried that his first kiss with Yamato would be terrible and an abysmal experience for his beloved girlfriend needs to practice. So he asked his best friend to practice on him. That's right, Takeo asked to kiss his best friend, who was a guy. And the entire, you, know, you can look this up online, you can look up Takeo kisses Suna, and you will be laughing your ass off at it. Certainly, the comedy is worth it in this manga. So, like I said, my, my verdict for this, definitely you should read it. If, like I said, if you, if you have the patience for a slower schedule, you, and you like a good rom-com, and something far removed from the typical good-looking, aloof, but um, but emotionally abusive guy and, and, and girlfriend and what have you, give this one a try. The cast is lovable, the writing is tight, the artwork is can be touching and funny and intense at the same time. It's definitely worth the read. So yeah, those are my thoughts on my love story. You can easily watch it. And you can easily watch the anime, but I would prefer that you read the manga. It's easily available online if you look for it. Hell, if I had the, if I could find it here in the in the states or online, buy it as I could buy that as well. So anyway, thank you for suffering through the first shaky episode of manga you should be reading. If you want to see more, or if there's any manga that you particularly want me to take a look at and spread the word about, just leave it in the comment section below. If you want to support me, my Patreon is in the link in the description below, as is my Twitter in case you want to get in touch with me. Tip Jar is up in the corner. So those are all the ways you can support me. So with that, this has been Shin Tiger Curl, that dude in the straw hat, saying good day and enjoy reading.